Office Hours is brought to you by Rebus Community and the Open Textbook Network. My clock says 103, so I'm going to um, jump in. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm just going to kind of review what this is, what we're doing, um, uh, and why, and tell you how hopefully it's going to play out. Um, so this is the Rebus Open Textbook Network Office Hours. Um, we've been doing this, I think this is maybe our fourth or fifth episode of this, and it's just a monthly discussion among people who are working mainly on the production of open textbooks to talk about issues related to what we're doing in this world. Um, so I'll tell you, uh, the focus today is on peer, uh, open or peer, anyway, reviewing open textbooks and how we approach this issue, which I think is critical. Um, I'm just going to tell you uh, quickly how it's going to play out. I'll tell you quickly about Rebus. Karen can talk quickly about Open Textbook Network, and then we can jump right into it. Um, so the topic is open or peer review for open textbooks, and we had kind of question marks in there about how we want to call this review because I think there are different ways to approach it. Um, and I think, I think it's really one of the critical, critical issues that I know that we here in our work at Rebus and Karen probably here is um, – the Open Textbook Network, and you guys have heard from faculty and other people, is like, how do I know that this, these textbooks are any good? And I think that reviewing and peer review is a mechanism to assure that. Um, and so, um, so it's a key issue, and I think we need to think about it um, in a context that can go beyond what the existing, let's say, academic review process looks like. Um, and there may be special things that we need to think about for open textbooks. I'm going to tell you quickly about the Rebus, uh, Rebus community and why we do this uh, event. And then I'll hand it over to Karen just for a quick intro to the OTM and uh, anything else you want to say to trip the process off. Um, so uh, at the Rebus community, we are trying to build a set of processes um, and a space where anyone who's building open textbooks can come and help um, get help producing those open textbooks. So we want the process to be clearer for people who are starting to produce open textbooks, whether that's institutions or individual faculty. Um, we're building a set of tools uh, to help support that um, production process, open textbook publishing process. And we undergird all of that with the notion that to get open textbooks really working well at scale, um, we need to undergird all of that with the notion of collaboration. So between institutions, between faculty members, and, and the, in a way this, uh, uh, this event that we do every month is part of this notion of trying to get all of us talking together about what are the best ways to go about solving these problems in the production process. Um, I would encourage all of you to sign up to the Rebus Community Forum at forum.rebus.community. Um, that's a place where a lot of this stuff is happening on specific uh, textbooks, but also on issues like MOUs, accessibility, uh, and we have one for peer review that I'll come back to it at the end of the call. So that's Rebus, um, and we're really happy that we've uh, partnered with the Open Textbook Network on doing these events. We do lots of stuff with the Open Textbook Network, and we love them because they do such great work. And I'll hand it over to you, Karen, to um, intro you guys, and then we can dive in. Thanks, Hugh. I will essentially echo everything that you have already said. Uh, we agree that peer review is a really important part of um, both adoption and creation of open textbooks, and we're very happy to be partnering with you guys on these questions and on office hours. So the Open Textbook Network is an alliance of higher ed institutions. I think we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 375 institutions currently. And of course, it's the people at those institutions who are really doing this work, which has focused mostly on adoptions, but now we are also starting to focus on creation. So uh, my role is Director of Publishing and Collections, so um, it fits together nicely in terms of thinking about the Open Textbook Library and how these books that we're making can um, serve the community well in that collection. So I know we're tight on time. I will stop there and hand it over to, um, I believe it's Anthony at OpenStax. Um, so I'm just gonna jump in, sorry. Um, sure. So again, Anthony, I'm gonna start the clock and uh, give you five minutes. Um, so I will be harsh with that just because we have a lot of people to talk and, and we do wanna uh, make some space for conversation. Uh, so Absolutely. over to you, Anthony. 
Okay, thanks. I got my stopwatch too. <laughs> so, um, uh, thanks. So glad to be here uh, to to speak to you all and work work with you all. And uh, very open to ideas. Um, I'll just I'll dive right in. OpenStax is uh, an organization. Our mission is to to develop and increase access to high quality educational materials, and mostly that is engendered by uh, creating textbooks. Uh, we've built uh, about 25 textbooks across a range of disciplines, from STEM to social sciences uh, to humanities, uh, mostly on the STEM side, but uh, we're we're moving into other disciplines as well. Um, they're authored and reviewed. They're authored and reviewed by college faculty. And I'll say that you know we have two basic processes. The first is the in development peer review, and the second is the post development once it's published. And so, so I'll cover both of those uh, as briefly as possible. Um, the 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 in development process is similar to many of the textbook traditional textbook development at, at the, the major publishers, where we you know we make sure that expert faculty with experience in the discipline and experience teaching this specific course, uh, so they understand the context and the level properly, are reviewing every chapter. Um, we do it iteratively uh, as much as possible. So, you know, it's drafted, and then it's reviewed, and then it's revised, and then it's reviewed again. And we go until we get to a point of where we feel it's the, high, the, the, the level of quality it needs to be in order to publish it. Uh, we, we try, depending on the discipline, we also that's the basic structure, um, but we, we also mix it up discipline by discipline. Physics is very different from American government. They're reviewing for different things. There are different issues in the course. And we utilize our faculty network and the reviewers themselves to tell us what we need to be concentrating on and so on. So we try to vary it as much as possible um, and, and bring in new ideas and new methods uh, as, as needed. We, we try to mix it up uh, in terms of types of reviewers, the profile, the region, um, for, you know, you can imagine economics or American government, geographic, political uh, balance is important, for example, um, and, and so on. So that's the in-development process. Everything is reviewed. Those reviewers are noted in the prefaces. Everybody knows who they are. It helps hopefully lend credibility and so on. Um, for the post, once, once we develop the book, obviously we put all this effort into ensuring accuracy and clarity whether the book is, is aligned with the course, but you know, issues and errors could slip through. Once people use the book, they have suggestions. Uh, it's, it's, we, that's what we welcome. We expect it, uh, the faculty, once they start teaching with something, are gonna wanna bring in their own material, their own ideas, and obviously their own corrections if they see anything that's amiss. So we, we try to be as transparent and as open to that process as possible. We welcome suggestions and errata, both from individual faculty, to entire departments and also to organizations. We have a lot of partners we're fortunate enough to work with that provide, you know, sometimes en masse, you know, uh, uh, comments about the way we've approached things or, or so on. And we, we try to make those, those changes as much as possible. The process there is simply um, every piece of erratum or suggestion or feedback that comes in is looked at by a team of faculty on a per book basis. So we have physicists, we have American, you know, political science, we have historians, depending on the book, they look at each one and they verify that it's actually needs to be made. And then um, they either accept it and make that change and it will go into a, a, an update of the book soon. Um, or they, uh, they write around it, depending on what the, you know, what the suggestion was. Sometimes the, the faculty providing feedback you know, give us the actual text to change. And sometimes they just say, hey, this is wrong, or I'd like, think you should consider this. And, you know, we, we make the changes based on that. Um, <clears throat> those are published in the process, of, you know, about once a month. And then we, uh, we do more holistic updates and revisions uh, about once a year. Um, I'll just say that, you know, that's our process so far. Again, we have the in-development and the post-development process. We're really well open and welcome to, to, to new ideas and glad to be on this call to hear about you know, what some other folks are doing and any suggestions you have. All right, that's awesome, uh, awesome timekeeping there, Anthony. Um, okay, so uh, we are gonna have some time afterwards to ask questions and have a discussion. So um, I'm gonna pass it over to Karen. I, will, I, I noticed from Liz's schedule that we're scheduled to end at 1.45. I'll stick around longer, and if people want to stay around till two, uh, anyone who can, please do. If you can't, then uh, there we go. Um, okay, so over to you, Karen. Okay, 
So currently, the purpose of peer review is really to introduce faculty to the Open Textbook Library. So the review that we're engaged in currently is happening post-production. And part of this is because we don't yet have a production uh, program. So um, really, faculty um, through a workshop are introduced to the Open Textbook Library. And as subject experts, they're encouraged to try and find a book in their particular area for them to take sort of a, a light first look at. And I'm going to put the rubric in the chat. This was adapted from BC Campus. So during a campus visit, after people join the Open Textbook Network, this is the rubric that faculty use during that workshop to take a look um, at the textbooks there. Obviously, it does not inform the development of the textbook as it does at OpenStax, as Anthony described um, at this point. However, most of the books in the Open Textbook Library have been peer reviewed as part of their production. Whether or not they explain this um, in the front matter or in um, another part of the textbook is a little bit on a case-by-case -case basis, but obviously we have OpenStax books in the Open Textbook Library. Um, Portland State has their own peer review process, as does Cali. So right now it's very diverse, um, and our process, as I said, is really post-production. So I'm actually going to leave it at that with the rubric, and then um, just uh, mention as I turn it over to Deb that her um, peer review process is actually featured in the new open authoring guide that we just released. So I'm going to put a link um, to Deb's process here and um, look forward to any questions that may be out there a little bit later. Good job, Karen. Under schedule. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, by the way, I don't know if everyone has access to see the chat. Um, the chat window here, but there is a chat window. There's some links in there, and I would also uh, recommend that anyone who has questions post them there. See, there's one from Cheryl, um, and we'll uh, so we can keep track of those and, and ask those in the discussion period. Um, okay, so I'm now going to hand the microphone over to Deb um, at Cali. Um, and maybe Deb, you can also explain a little bit about what Cali is uh, and and your review process. Over to you. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much for all for inviting me here. I'll see how closely I, I track what I told Karen that appeared in the book uh, several weeks ago. It'll be entertaining for me at least. Um, so Cali is the Center for Computer Assisted Legal Instruction. We're a not-for-profit. We've been around for about 30 years. We create web-based tutorials for law students. That was our core. We've now got 1,000 individual interactive tutorials for students. Um, and then we've started branching into things such as access to justice, um, case books, podcasts, things like that. So uh, my title is Director of Curriculum Development and Associate Counsel. So basically, um, I'm in charge of all the content that, that comes through Cali. So we've always been concerned with quality. Obviously, I have a personal fear of what I label the lone wolf, um, someone with a, a fascinating take on the law um, that is not yet recognized by the rest of the United States. So students should be taught responsibly things that are um, accurate. So um, our process of review started with lessons. And through that, um, and my fear of constantly meeting strangers, I created an editorial board. And I've got 60 law librarians and law faculty spanning the country, the United States, um, that uh, teach in a variety of areas and things. So I reach out to them always for lessons. Um, and it was natural when we started doing our Elingdell open source case books that we would reach out to them as well. So, Casebooks are a little bit different than my memory of what a textbook is. Casebooks are 80% edited court decisions and about 20% what I call original content, which could be anything from state statutes to offer commentary to actual questions. So our review process um, is um, anonymous. Um, the reason for that is I fear, I have many fears, but I fear two people getting stuck in an elevator um, a junior faculty member who has reviewed a senior faculty's um, book. And I don't want that stuck in the elevator conversation to be awkward. I would rather have it be informative. 
Um, so our reviews are anonymous. We do pay a very, very modest honorarium to faculty. And that's mainly so that I can demand things on time and then take things away if people are too slow. I give people two weeks to review a chapter. Um, I first ask the authors to suggest peers to review their material, because it's easier for me to go and say, uh, Professor Table suggested that I contact you. Um, so Professor Chair, would you be willing to look at chapter seven because you're an expert in the coverage of chapter seven. If I don't get any results there, I turn to my editorial board. Um, you must be an expert in the topic to review it, which I define as you already teach the material. Um, if I don't find anyone from the editorial board, then I turn to what I label the friends of the editorial board. So I'll call up some folks and say, do you have anyone at your school who might be willing to review this? And then I start meeting strangers. Um, and I do that by reviewing uh, blog posts. I look to see who's writing about this area. I look for law review articles that suggest the person is writing in the area. Um, and then I just start trolling law school websites and, and looking for folks to introduce to Cali. I send an email out to the person with a full table of contents. This doubles as a, a promotional piece in a way um, and ask people to pick their own chapter. Um, and then I give them two weeks to review. That's enough time so that they can delay, but not fully procrastinate. Um, I ask for one or two pages of the review and I give them a couple guideline questions uh, to focus their process so that they're not just given a 50-page chapter and a wide world of where to start. Um, and I do ask authors to contact me if they find something really hideously wrong with a book so that I can uh, grab it back um, and or we can at least talk about it. Some chapters get double reviews just as a quality check and balance system because I still believe there's a check and balance in the world. Um, I put in a behind the scenes review process through the final proofreading, which is I get an expert in the area to do my proofreading and we catch some final errors there. And then of course I await user feedback um, and that's my time. All right, thank you, Deb. Um, I already have jotted down several ideas for um, thinking about how we can uh, address this issue. Um, quickly, I'm gonna turn over to John, um, and then it'll be me, and I'll try to keep things quick, and then we'll open things up. So, uh, John Udell from Hypothesis. Hey, Hugh, thanks a lot. I was mainly expecting to listen and kind of gather requirements for how Hypothesis could be used to facilitate peer review, but I'm happy to give a quick little demo if that's helpful. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, do a yes. screen share here, um, and uh, let's see, is that legible to folks? I can bump up the font some probably. Yes, legible. Okay. So uh, this is a, a, a Lumen textbook um, and um, actually has Hypothesis embedded, so I didn't even need to launch the Hypothesis extension. And there is some review of this book that's happening right now. So the way that it works is that um, a reviewer selects a phrase or sentence and creates an annotation. Every annotation, um, in this case, this one is anchored to the phrase Home Depot, um, is potentially uh, the root not just of a comment, but of a discussion. So here there's actually a discussion happening between, I don't know who's the author and who's the editor, but um, but that's happening. So uh, this uh, this is available now. Um, I heard a mention of the notion of a, of a blind review. Um, one way that, um, that, that that can be done now with Hypothesis would be to create a new group. Um, so I would, uh, let's say, create a group. And maybe the group's uh, name would reflect uh, the slug. And so this would be a group for, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, mastering business too. Uh, and now um, I can switch to that group uh, right here. And I'm in a new layer. And then I can create an annotation here. 
that's targeted to that layer. And, uh, and now if I were the uh, uh, editor here, I would invite, let's say, the author into this group by taking this URL right here, the group URL, and just handing it to whoever else needed to join the group. So um, that's a, a very light level of security on the group feature. Um, I guess what I want to say is, you know, we've obviously thought a lot about how these tools that we have now and other tools that are in development um, will facilitate peer review, but we need to hear more from you folks. And then I think we need to start getting into a process of running experiments and finding out, you know, what can be done with the tools that we already have. Um, and that will inform how we then adapt the tools that are in the pipeline for this uh, for this use case, which is a, a major one in, in our thinking. And I'll stop there. Awesome. Thank you, John. Um, so lots of, or at least a couple of comments about how exciting hypothesis is. And we agree, um, and John, we have some conversation to have about various other things, not just peer review soon. Um, okay, so let me give an overview of um, where we're coming from. At Rebus, as I mentioned at the beginning, our objective is to try to help develop um, a community-driven process for publishing open textbooks, build some tools to help make that happen more easily, um, and undergird all that with the notion of collaboration being a key part of how we're going to make open textbooks successful at, at, at scale um, on both the production side and uh, the, the um, adoption side with the theory that the more people get involved in the creation of an open textbook, the more engagement there is and the more buy-in there is broadly in academia, which means that it's easier to get it into classrooms. Um, and by the way, that doesn't necessarily mean anything as radical as Wikipedia, where every chapter page uh, ought to be edited by anyone who wants to do it, but rather there's a bunch of things that happen. There's um, writing of the content, there's proofreading, there's editing, there's cleaning up formatting, there's all sorts of different kinds of things that happen in the creation of a uh, textbook besides just writing. Peer review is one of these really important things that um, we know that we want to help develop mechanisms to work on this. And really, um, we're just at the very beginning of thinking about different ways to go about doing that. I think as um, has been hinted at here, there's, there's sort of different layers or different types of review that need to be taken into account. There's sort of the formal, um, probably the more formal peer review process. So we're working on a book um, where we're taking this, this challenge and saying, okay, how do we address this for this one book with the idea that this will be applied uh, as, as a process that could be used for any book um, that Rebus is doing or in general really anyone in the world that's making open textbooks. So uh, the first thing that an academic who's writing a textbook or any academic piece wants is some kind of peer review where there's a subject matter expert who takes a look at this thing and says, um, you know, does a, a standard peer review. So that's really a question of reaching out. I think Deb's approach sounds really interesting. I think we're going to um, come back to you, Deb, shortly to, to um, hear more about that. But um, uh, so, so that's a question of just reaching out to people who might be willing to review it. Um, next, there's sort of this notion of something that's a more open review in, in the publication process. So maybe something like beta readers, um, things like that. And this, this is where hypothesis becomes really interesting, where you could imagine a, a world where an open textbook is in production. And as chapters get um, written, maybe there are classrooms who get assigned reviewing that chapter. Um, I think there's a lot of pedagogical things that can happen that are really interesting here, where, um, and hypothesis again becomes a really interesting tool for that, where, you know, people can be reading online and just noting, um, annotating in a public way or semi-public way, um, problems or questions or whatever that, that the author might want to take into account. Um, and then as uh, OpenStax, um, as Anthony mentioned, there's sort of this uh, longer, uh, time frame of review where we're thinking about uh, 
how does this get improved over time and how do we build mechanisms so that there's feedback going back to the author. So we're thinking about this from a system point of view. How do we build up both the process and understand what the process is and then start building tools so that, you know, embedded in every book, there's a clear sense of how do you get back to the author to let them know if there's, um, if there's changes that should be made on chapter 14 or whatever it is. Um, so that's kind of our, our uh, approach to this. Um, and I'm going to pitch out an idea, which is I would be interested after we're done here, those of you who are interested in helping figure out what this process could look like in a really robust way, um, to join a small working group where we could think about these issues and, and dig in a little bit more deeply. Um, so that is a uh, request I have for all of you. So I think I, I probably went slightly over my time, but Karen was slightly under her time. And so we're just about in the right place. Uh, so I'm going to open it up for, um, uh, for questions. Um, I would note uh, the, there's, I've seen some questions in here about hypothesis in the Rebus Pressbooks instance. Yes, it is, is available there, Liz. Um, so anyone who's doing a uh, open textbook with Rebus has access to press books um, with a hypothesis um, with hypothesis this, this is running on it naturally. Okay, so for uh, so that's uh, I think a review of where we are from our perspective. We're just at the beginning of trying to sort out what this ought to look like. Um, so we don't really have answers. We have some ideas, but uh, we'd like to turn things over to you guys to ask questions. And I think, Liz, our mechanism is to have people type the questions and uh, I can read them out. Um, does that work? Um, and so if you've got a question, please type it in and ask uh, and, and say who it's for. Um, I'm going to start with one question, which was for Anthony. Uh, and that came from Cheryl. And I will paraphrase, which is, could you tell us a little bit about your compensation approach for reviewing uh, at OpenStax? Uh, sure. Um, so for the in-development reviews, the ones we're doing as we're, as we're getting the books uh, written, we do compensate instructors and we, we search for them. And in a similar way uh, to what was said, you know, we, we are looking at uh, people who are teaching the course where we're, we're looking at people who speak at conferences, who have reviewed other textbooks, who have expressed an interest, do some, some outreach. And then, yeah, for their time, and for their, uh, you know, to make sure they do it on time and then put a good effort into it, we do compensate them. And it, it varies on, a, on how, by how much they're reviewing and the steps of this particular review, um, but they are compensated. And, uh, uh, and then in terms of the people who submit, uh, faculty or other students or other organizations who submit um, material post-production, those, they're not being compensated. Um, when we go through an update process and we're doing a revision of a book, which we don't do all the time, but we do it sometimes, then we'll, we'll go out and we'll explore and we'll look for more reviewers and, and, and we'll often drive on, on the people who have already submitted some comments and say, hey, you know, this is really helpful. Would you like to do more? And we'll, we'll be able to compensate you this time. But uh, that's about how we do it. Excellent. Um, so I'm not seeing, is there another question here? I have a question for Karen. Um, that's a leading question, unless anyone else has something else. Um, Karen, I, I uh, oh yeah, so there's a question of how much, and I'd be interested, I know, I think that Deb does some uh, compensation. Um, yeah, exactly. How much, <laughs> what's, what's, uh, what's the going rate? Um, and I assume there's a range, but um, uh, Deb, you might have an answer. Uh, Karen, you've got an answer. And Anthony, uh, I don't know if you'd like to answer that as well. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, so I, there is a little bit of wiggle uh, but my current going rate is $75, which is not an enormous amount of money. I define it to faculty members as an opportunity to shape legal education. Um, and also a really nice night at the movies with a larger bucket of popcorn than any one should ever eat. That's how I sort of phrase it. And people sort of are willing to go along with, <laughs> with my dietary habits. <laughs> And Anthony, I don't know if you want to. Uh, sure, uh, it's it's actually about the same. There, um, there is a range, but sometimes by discipline, um, you know, and uh, but um, about seventy-five, sometimes a hundred, sometimes a little less, uh, de depending on what what people are able to do. Some people volunteer, obviously, but the, the payment is is like Deb said. And, and Karen, uh, I wonder yes. if you could answer the same question, but also um, if you could, uh, I'd be interested, or I'm sure everyone is interested to hear. 
just a little bit about the impacts of that reviewing process as well. Um, yeah, thank you for those questions. And adoption so, is the thing that I'm, I'm curious about there, yeah. Right, so um, we frame it not as a fee for review, but rather a um, uh, compensating faculty for their time joining this workshop and spending time in professional development. And it's $200, which is funded by the institution that is hosting the Open Textbook Network. And it has um, been very successful in both introducing faculty to the Open Textbook Library and also, Hugh, as you alluded to, addressing concerns about quality or, you know, what are these books, what's inside. And the majority of textbooks are rated very positively. Again, um, this is a lighter review, but most of them are in the, the four out of five star um, zone. Actually, um, I'll look that up when I finish talking and I can tell you perhaps the more specific number. But um, it's been very successful in introducing people to what they consider uh, quality textbooks. Does that help? Excellent. Um, yes, it does indeed. Great. Um, I wonder, so Nicholas has a, um, uh, Nicholas has a, a comment here. Um, which I guess I'll just read out, but, but the question is, what are some thoughts about development of a peer review community? It seems that the tools to help make the actions of peer review possible, but what tools are you using to think more about how to grow a strong web community, avenues of participation, awareness, the, 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 the opportunities, mentorship pathways to becoming a writer, et cetera. Um, and I'm gonna take this one, anyone else is welcome to as well. Um, uh, so this is really the kind of thing and why we love having these calls every month because it basically gives us fodder to think about how we can shape what we're doing at Rebus. And this is exactly the kind of approach that we want to be taking, which is thinking about how can we build up communities to get the things done that have to happen in creating open textbooks. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think this is really, uh, the way that I think we can scale this out. And what's, what's great is that I think that, you know, we have a very open approach to how we work with everyone and we're trying to work with everyone in uh, who wants to work with us in, in the space. So um, anyway, so we would be happy to be a, a sort of host organization to try to help um, think about how to do this. And again, I encourage those of you guys who are interested in this to, to, um, uh, to, talk to us afterwards and see if we can come up with a sort of plan of action to develop some ideas about how to do this. And open to anyone else to talk about community. Actually, I'd be interested in OpenStax and how you're, how you're thinking about, about those, those issues. Uh, yeah, I mean, one of our, you know, our, our goal is to sort of build a community around each textbook or discipline area as we're, as we're doing it. Again, you know, um, there are differences and there it's different, different faculty. Um, so we have to sort of continue that and, and also consider what networks are, might exist in the discipline. So in physics, you know, the, the association of American physics teachers has a pretty strong community around both education research and, and educational improvement, but also around, you know, this idea of just a general idea of open and, and how you publish those things. I know the geo, we don't do geoscience, but they, they do as well and others do. So, uh, can seeing what networks were already out there and seeing how we could uh, cohesively work with them. But secondarily, um, I, I think, you know, some of the ideas I'm seeing in the chats, it's sometimes it crops up at a school who is creating custom, customized versions of existing OER, not just ours, but others. And, uh, you know, if, if, there's, if there's 10 or 12 faculty working on something, then that's a natural peer review process, even if they're customizing it. And what, what we want to do is, okay, you make your version for what's going to work for this school, um, but can you give us any feedback you had on the general textbook content along the way? And, uh, and we'll, we'll use that where it's applicable. We, you know, we won't copy their custom version, but if they made a change to something we had, we'll, we'll go ahead and incorporate that as, as feedback. Um, there was a note here. Thank you again. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to want to call you guys. <laughs> We're done as well, but uh, so there's a note here from Cheryl. Um, 
saying that the open textbook network review process has been really successful at getting books into, uh, getting people to adopt books. Um, but there is still a desire to see a formal peer review process for open textbooks. And I wonder uh, if anyone would like to take the, the question, I mean, I think it's been touched on, but uh, to just sort of specifically say like, what is it that people need to see and want to see, and, and how is that represented? Um, to, to get people more comfortable to say, okay, I understand this thing was formally peer reviewed. What does that mean to them? Does anyone want to take that, Deb or Anthony or, or Karen? I'll, I'll take a bite of that. So I think it can mean a variety of things. I was just at the library publishing forum and one presenter um, was putting forward ideas of, of um, better transparency in the peer review process while still having more flexibility. So whatever peer review system you use, you clearly outline what that is in the front matter of the book. Um, Cheryl's notes, I really appreciate, it's one of the challenges of being a referatory is that we're pointing to um, open textbooks where they live on the internet that are done by a wide variety of authors and publishers. And sometimes it's clear what their peer review process was and sometimes it's not. I mean, one of the requirements for being in a library is that the textbook is affiliated with the scholarly society. And I think what Anthony um, was describing is really part of the ideal. And in thinking about how to keep collections alive and up to date, I think that that's a really super model that I'm very interested in exploring more, especially as the Open Textbook Network is thinking about how to support creation. So, you know, there are issues with traditional publishers and the blind, double blind, anonymous, and exactly what we're talking about. So I don't know if it has to mirror um, those different systems. Um, I just think that there's probably a lot of, of um, flexibility and then it's just up to us to define what the peer review process looked like and maybe there's sort of a standard way that we can do that. Um, the presenter, and I apologize for not recalling his name in this moment, but he, he put forth a model that uh, sort of mirrored the Creative Commons licenses. You know, you would have one model that looked like this that said, okay, this is how this book was reviewed, another, another model that looked a little so, bit different. So the idea there, Karen, is something like, um, a, a, basically a, a badge that would be associated with, and. and badge associated with the book saying, you know, this has gone through the, whatever, open textbook review process X. And that's and, right. And, and maybe that, you know, part of that sort of badge lists, you know, so and so at Harvard reviewed it and blah, 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 whatever, whatever things are. But. Or even, you know, the author and editor led this particular review process, A. Um, or a scholarly society collectively reviewed this particular process, B. Um, right really defining that. Right. Thank you, Terry. Mark Eddington at Lever Press is the one who talked about badges. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked it. I think, you know, th this, this, it's something that, again, we hear a lot. I'm sure that, um, Karen, you guys hear it all the time, is, you know, when you talk about OER to people who don't know about it, it's sort of the sense that the world is just filled with a bunch of stuff out there. And so finding a way to say, no, this is okay. This is, this is in good shape and people care about it. I think, and it goes beyond peer review. I think the other, the other similar sort of signal that people want to see is, oh, this has been assigned in 15 different courses at major um, universities. And I'm sure, actually, maybe OpenStax, you can talk about um, Anthony, you could talk about about that sort of social signal and, and how that works in the open to stacks context. Um, sure, happy to. Uh, you know, one one of our early goals in, in trying to make textbooks that were going to get adopted was you making it justifiable and relatively seamless. So, you know, if you look at our books, they look pretty much like regular textbooks, and they. Um, the re and they, they're structured in the same way. Our psychology book has 16 chapters, just like every other psychology book. And in, the, in a way that might cut down on innovation and, and, and you know, pedagogical improvement, but it does start the adoption process. And, and our, one of our views is that once you're there, you could innovate in other ways. And maybe, you know, maybe they're using clickers, which now you can afford because you're not paying for the textbook or something like that. So anyway, um, the, the way that that comes, you know, true is, you know, I've, I've been on many campuses, both for the traditional publishers and, and with OpenStax, and, you know, who else is using this? And, you know, the ability to provide a list, and often 
um, you know, if uh, we, we don't supply names often, but, but, you know, if it's, if it's a psychology professor at, um, at one school and you, you tell them another school's using it, they usually know enough people there that they can, can make a contact if they want. Um, and, and, and just sometimes the volume of seeing, okay, there's a hundred schools using something or there's 50 schools using something it also gives that confidence. But, you know, I, I, this idea that we're talking about here of maybe making, making that more open, I, you know, what, what OTM is doing, for example, that it's more of a reference and that, you know, it doesn't always have to be us because, you know, you get to a scale issue. Uh, I can't answer every question and, and faculty shouldn't really take my word for it. You know, they, they should look at their colleagues and other people who have done a peer review um, through some of the documentation methods we're talking about here. Awesome. Um, more questions, anyone? I'm slowly formulating another question. A little wait to see if anyone else jumps in. Um, so what would, in again, in uh, sort of a standard peer review process, um, the double blind is sort of the gold standard. So you've got two reviews. Could someone just talk to me about that? Cause I actually don't know much about what a traditional reviewing process looks like in, and if anyone knows whether there's a significant difference between let's say journal review or journal article reviews versus textbook reviewing. Um, wonder if anyone could just educate me a little bit on that. Sure, I, I can on, on that. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot. But um, on the, the traditional side of, if, if you're talking about a traditional publisher of textbooks, it's very different from journal reviews. They are, um, it's more to what, similar to what I was talking about, what Deb was talking about, where they're basically being sent a chapter or a, or a unit or whatever that the entity is with a questionnaire, and maybe, and maybe being also asked to mark up the chapter uh, directly, and uh, that we do that as well. And then they respond there's usually questions really along the lines of the rubric from, from OTN, you know, on the BC, the BC campus rubric, um, particular to the textbook and to the discipline, you know, specific. And then there are frankly, uh, you know, often sort of the, the, the adoption question, you know, would you, would you adopt this or, you know, in it's formal where it is now, or would you rate it? Would you rate it compared to your existing resource? If, if that comparison is valid and it's not always in the case of OER reviews, but um, that's, that's how it works with journal, Journal reviews are, are typically a little more formal and the, the blindness comes in. in. In the case of textbook publishers, I mean, they, they want to put the names out. They, they want, sometimes they, they want the, uh, the notoriety, you know, of, of having certain people from certain schools review and, and stuff like that. Excellent. Um, okay, so we're actually at 1.45, uh, which was our targeted time. Um, I'm happy to stay on longer if people want to discuss more. Um, I, I will reiterate my desire to get a group of people to try to work on a plan to come up with um, what I'm going to steal from uh, Billy, who's posted here about um, workflows or documentation for reviewing open textbooks. So what I would like to do is, is first of all, see what's out there. Um, and see if if we can get a group of people to come to come up with an idea for how this might work and think about how to how to um, um, Build this out with notions like Deb's review board, which I think is a really interesting idea, you know, if we could get all the um, Maybe not all of them, but if every OTN member school for instance um, You know every OTN member schools librarian who's kind of the key staff person in charge of that relationship could help get, for instance, a subject librarian on a topic for, um, uh, let's say we have a geography book or OpenStax is a geography book. And if we could just build up this network of, oh, here's the, you know, the five people who can help us with geography and here's, et cetera. I think that could be really interesting. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I would like, uh, I'll probably um, ask all of you again, I've already done some in the, in the chat here about joining a group to, to talk about this. Um, Anthony, would you be interested in joining that? Because I think you guys already have an existing process, but I guess that if we could come up with a scalable you know, community-driven process around this would be helpful to OpenStax as uh, much as I'd love to, yeah, to be a part of it, to, to learn and to, to give whatever we can. And we, you know, there's, there's a lot out there 
you know, people that we're aware of that are looking to develop textbooks that, that aren't right for us. I mean, it's too upper level or something like that, but it's, it's really a valid book and, and peer review would certainly help those. I'd love to just talk about that and get them in a process and, and have the rest of you, you know, if, if, if it could publish through other organizations and stuff, that, that would be outstanding. So I'd love to. Thank you. Um, Deb or Karen, do you have any, um, any follow-ups you'd like to add to any of this discussion? Or John, sorry, John as well. Well, I'd like to be part of this community, Hugh, to discuss this further. Please count me in. That'd be great. Um, the law world is a little bit different. Law review articles are peer-reviewed by law students, which is always a quizzical reality. Um, some of the big publishers, I'm told, are no longer doing peer review of chapters, so we're trying to uh, do a bonus add, a value added, um, since from my office I'm attempting to dismantle or disrupt the standard law school publishing world. Um, so it's validity of the material, and if you can prove adoptions by others, um, there, there is that what is someone else doing? Are they making the same choice? Are, are they changing? Change is frightening. So how do we get over the change aspect? I think is a key topic to this. Yeah. Um, okay, so we will um, send out just a, a update on this. We will make sure that the video is available and all of you know about it. Um, we will also um, send out a general invitation to join the group. We may do some uh, arm twisting of specific people who've said they will join in and I'll probably even get John Udell to join in because I think we have some interesting conversations about hypotheses to have in this context. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Um, does anyone else have any last uh, questions before we sign off? We are now four minutes late. That's my fault. I should have just uh, stopped while we were ahead. But it's been really great, fascinating, and I really appreciate everyone, uh, everyone's time, both in listening and the questions um, and the panelists who joined us. It was really great. Um, but Karen, do you have anything else you want to say to close out? No, I share your gratitude and look forward to keeping the conversation going. All right. Thank you, Hugh. Okay, well, thank you, everyone.